Hello. My name is Dr. Zimbelman, and this is a video about UVs and the use of ambient occlusion in specular maps. First of all, I want to say something about second life phases. Because the word phase is a conceptual element in second life. A phase is a section on an object that can have its own specifications and settings, such as texture, color, glow. And a phase is an independent section on an object. Making changes to phase 1 does not affect phase 2. So when I'm going to use the word phase in this video, I mean this second life feature. I will use the word surface for the actual faces or sides of an object. Now faces. They are very straightforward when we look at a regular second life cube. I'm pressing one out and I have this little script that turns every face into a different color. So we can see here, every side of this cube has its own face. But it is not always so that every surface of an object will have its own face. A bunch of surfaces can be grouped together and get the same face assigned. For mesh models, it is the mesh creator who assigns the faces before uploading the model to Second Life. And he or she can make collections of surfaces from all over the object to be assigned to the same face. So sections of the same face don't have to lay next to each other. They can be spread and appear all over the object. Let's take a look at this door. Drop the script inside. And here we can see the different faces on this object. We can see the panels here. They have the same face, although they are not exactly lying next to each other. In the the borders are surrounding it with another face. The hinge plates, for example, are over here, but they have the same face assigned as a lock plate, which is over here. And we can have eight of such, such faces per object in Second Life. UV layouts. We have our models in three dimensions, extending over the X, Y, and Z axis, as we can see here. Textures, however, only have two axes. Open a texture, we can see we have a horizontal and a vertical axis, which we call a U and a V. So, although we are working with 3D models, when it comes to texturing, we find ourselves in a 2D space. This means that all the surfaces of the 3D model have to be translated and organized into 2D plans. Such an arrangement is what we call a UV layout, and a UV map is a representation of this layout. Let's take a look at the UV map for the front of this door, which looks like this. So we can see here, at the left on our map, the borders of the front of the door, and here on the right, we have the panels. The two-day space is a square one, and a square texture will fill the complete two-day space. So this texture over here is just as large as the two-day space over here. When we apply our UV map to the door, we can see the layout, how it appears on the door. 3D model laid out on this map. The UV mapper, this is how we call this texture, is a, is a texture is very handy to see what's going on on the model. Um, it, all, it, all, it has all these different squares. Um, when I apply it, you can see how things are laid out and you can easily find a certain spot back from the 3D model onto the 2-day space. Say you want to know where this spot here is in the 2-day space, well, we can see it's the brown ZBL with the 4 next to this star. We can quickly see it's over here on the 2-day space. So this space on the 3D model, you can find back here on the 2-day space. And when you look at the layout, it will be somewhere over here. Now, let's take a look at our maps in an external image editor. I'm going to use GIMP because this is free software, it's well documented, and so it's accessible to anyone. First of all, we need to download our maps from Second Life. We can do this with the Save button over here. So I'm going to download it onto my hard drive. First one, and this one as well. Okay, and now we're going to open them in GIMP. Open file, and I'm going to open UV Mapper first. And this gives me a first layer in my GIMP file. You can see on the right here, 
we have one layer open i'm going to open uv map as a second layer we go to file and open as layer we choose now opening uv layer. so now we have two layers i have my uv mapper and i have the uv layout um, layers are like all different images loaded into the same file um, we can turn on visibility or we can change opacity which i'm going to do now with the uv map and so we can see now how the texture and where it will appear on the 3d model and as we are seeing it here it's exactly the same as how we were seeing it remember the spot we had over here exactly the same way as we were seeing it in second life this and this we don't have to place all the surfaces of a model onto one single two-day layout we can spread them over several maps for second life this means we can have a separate map for each face although we can make combinations as well like for our door we had one uv layout for the border and the panels we will have another one for the handle and the lock over here and it looks like this it's a different uv layout for these different parts and in fact those were two if you remember well two different faces they are combined on one map we have the handle over here and we can see the lock plate over here now laying out 3d surfaces onto 2d maps isn't always that easy and choices have to be made when we look at our cube there isn't much difficulty each face has its own full square layout but what with a sphere for example it is impossible to lay out a spherical surface as it is onto a two-day map let's look at some examples so here we have a set of spheres every time the same model but with different amount of faces assigned and with different uv layouts and you can see how differently this will the texture will appear on the model depending on the layout like here we have a polar the most simple layout texture appears like this you can see there's a lot of distortion and, and changing in, in the scale of the texture all over the sphere here we have a hemispherical has been cut in two you can see the cut here where the uvs have been cut but there's a bit less distortion uh, for example this one you can see there are a lot of faces and cuts it looks like this but seen from a distance this one looks better than that one so depending on what we want or what the creator wants and what the creator has decided we can have all these kinds of different layouts for the same model also notice that depending on the layout the texture appears at a different scale on the model and sometimes different faces on the model can have a different scale for the laid out surfaces in case of our door let's go back to our door over here the front of the door was laid out as one whole uv map as we have seen because it's easy to texture we have no cuts so we have placed it on one complete map but if we would lay, the, lay out the smaller parts like the handle and the lock at the same scale they would be simply too small to be able to work with so these have been laid out at a different scale and we can easily see this if we apply uv mapper so you can see here's a big difference in scale used for the layouts of this face and that face ambient occlusion ambient occlusion gives basic shading on a model it is a calculation based on the geometry how exposed to ambient light sections of the model are so ambient occlusion shades are not real shadows just a lightning difference between exposed and more surrounded sections they are made with external 3d software and baked onto a texture for our door our front door this looks like this and this is applied as a texture onto our model and we can see it gives a lot of realism to our model compared to this one over there over here same model without the ambient occlusion maps applied even i have my graphic settings at the highest quality there is 
quite some difference between the two. Okay, so now I want to texture my door. I have two textures, this one and this one, two wooden textures that I want to apply to the front of my door. I can simply drop them onto the faces here inside Second Life and voila, my door is textured. However, I have lost my ambient occlusion shading. Because we can only have one texture applied to a face, it's or the wood texture or the ambient occlusion map. If I want to have both, I have to blend them together in an external image editor as GIMP, which is what we're going to do now. So first of all, let's download these textures. Saved. Okay, and the ambient occlusion map as well. To find which map is applied to a certain face on the door, just click the face, go here to the texture tab, click this little box here, and then you can see the texture inside your inventory. Double click it and save it as well. So back inside GIMP, I'm going to import the textures I've been downloading, open as layers. I have my two woods and my ambient occlusion map. And they are appearing here as new layers. Um, the ambient occlusion layer should be on top. If not, you have arrows here where you can move uh, the layer order. Now, to blend them together, I'm going to use a specific blend mode called Multiply. We have this box here where it says Mode. If you click it, you can see all the different blend modes that we can uh, use, and we're going to use Multiply. So we click Multiply. And you see, now I have my ambient occlusion map onto my texture. On both of the textures, I can have them. So this I'm going to export. You go to File, Export As. And uh, let's give this a name. This was the first wood. Export as Targa. OK, the other one. Export and this is a uh, wood four. Okay, now let's take a look at what we have done back in Second Life. Luckily, we have the possibility to preview our textures before upload uploading them and spending another ten bucks. Um, and we go here to local ads. I go to my file and here are the two ones I've been making and I open them and click them and now they are applied to my door in preview and as we can see we have our wood textures but at the same time we have the ambient occlusion map applied and it looks much better than what we had over here what we have done now. If you want to make uh, changes to the brightness or darkness of the shading, I can do this here in GIMP as well. I can, If I find the shading of the ambient occlusion map too heavy, I can just simply lower the opacity here, bringing that down. As you can see, make things more subtle. Or if I find it not enough, then I can duplicate the layer, which I do with this little button over here. And now I have it twice as strong, which is maybe too strong, but then again, I can change the opacity on the second layer and try them out in preview until I have what I desire.